Uh, again, want to thank Josh Flug, Rabbi Josh Flug from Yeshiva University, who puts these papers together. So on, the topic is conservation, and he starts out with these with, with this story. When Venus Buchholz was seven years old, he learned about Earth Day and the concept of recycling. He started to collect recyclable products from his neighbors' homes and bring them to a recycling center. By the time he was 10, he was collecting recyclables from all over town on his bicycle and earning a few hundred dollars a month, 25% of which he donated to a charity that helps the homeless. There you go. He should have donated to Midwest Torah Center. We would have all been happy. Okay. <laughs> if I go around recycling, I too can make a few hundred dollars a month. Oh, boy. So, But no, it was a nice story. The story is, ba- uh, is understood that he was recycling, he cared about it, he learned, and he was doing it fine. So he says, we live in an age where there is a great awareness about conservation, and one who wants to conserve has plenty of opportunities to do so. However, there are times when our desire to conserve is met with challenges. So we have three cases, as Josh, like Rabbi Flute, likes to do. Case number one, Stephen packed two yogurts to eat for lunch, on the camp trip. After finishing one of them, he is full and can't eat the second. He offers it to Jonathan and says, please eat it, because otherwise it will go to waste. Jonathan really doesn't want to eat the yogurt, but he doesn't want it to go to waste. What should he do? Treve. Stop it down throat? No, they should find somebody else who would like it, oh. or they should take it back. He should just, if he took it with him on the trip to the camp, camp trip, he can take it back I'm home. guessing that it will spoil. Uh, well, I don't think anyone should force themselves to eat something they don't want just okay. to conserve the item. That's okay. not his responsibility. That's Stephen's. Good enough. Well, let's go on. It's going to get worse as we go. <laughs> Lisa is very particular about recycling. While on a hike with her family, they stop for lunch, and Lisa is disappointed that there are no recycling bins in the picnic area, only regular trash bins. She is about to start the most difficult part of the hike in carrying all the recyclables with her so she can recycle them later. It would make the hike even harder. What should she do? So when I went over this at Notre Dame, they said, one of the people said, Work hard. Well, it depends a lot on the route, but what I would do is cash if I really felt that strongly, which I wouldn't carry a lot of recyclables on a hike like that because I okay. just I wouldn't. I would cash it somewhere where I am. You mean hide it? Well, cash means gather hide? it together and put it in a place that's not uh, in the way of anything, and then okay. come back and when I'm on my way back going home. Pick it up and take it and recycle it. Why carry it around okay. with you? Okay. Maybe she alternative. can't go back. Well, if she, you know, then I, I, I wouldn't. I okay. wouldn't carry it all the way on the trip. So here is where uh, um, another one, another discussion we had in our game was somebody said, if the recycling is there, I'll do it. If not, not. So I explained that we have a concept in Jewish law of a mumar l'teavon versus a mumar l'achit. A mumar l'teavon is an apostate by choice, by taste, literally by taste, versus a mumar l'achit is an apostate by, uh, by conviction. So what's the difference? A mumar l'teavon, I have a kosher a hamburger in front of me. I have a non-kosher hamburger in front of me. The moment the tab owner is going to say, well, it should be kosher, I'll take the kosher hamburger, and he'll leave the tray font aside. Because really, he knows what he should be doing. But, on the other hand, if he did not have a kosher burger, but all he had was a tray, he would eat that too, because he wants to eat. His eating is taking over, but if he has kosher, he'll do it. The moment the is on the other hand, if he has kosher and he has tray, always will take the tray. He's not possible by conviction, not by choice, not by taste. By conviction, how are you? So that's why. So in this case, this I explained to this, <laughs> this student that he was a mumar letevo. Oh, what did he do? He liked it. He thought it was funny. If <laughs> if you have the opportunity to recycle, you recycle. You agree with it. But when it comes to a, a little extra work, not worth it. So I'm not going to do it. 
That's a more, that's a classic mumla teavon versus mumla haches, which would say, I don't believe in recycling. I'm gonna leave it. I wouldn't even throw it in the garbage. I'll just leave it where it is. Okay. Yeah. And the last case is Shira and Kayla share a room. Now, this is a, a fight I think many people have. Shira likes to leave the air conditioning on in the summer, the entire day, because it takes time for the room to cool off. And they are always in and out of the room. Kayla thinks that it is a waste of electricity, and they should only turn it on when they are in the room. How should they resolve this conflict? Well, I turn my air conditioning. I have a little window unit, so it's not a big blue box. Turn it on in the 80s, and then it starts to heat up, and it runs all summer until October when I turn it off because it costs a whole lot more in electricity than money shut it down and turn it on and shut it down and turn it on and the rooms never really get cool before you shut it down again so it makes it work harder. So you're saying Kayla is wrong? I'm saying... Kayla is wrong? Yes, Kayla is wrong. Okay. Long story short, yes, yes. Kayla is wrong. Oh, uh, and what you're really saying is compare the bill. Mm -hmm. If you have it running off and on, so you take that bill and you compare it. That can be one thing she does. What else? I like that idea. Run a study for a month. Okay. Especially now that autumn has returned. <laughs> a polar vortex, excuse me. Is mm. that what they're saying? There's a polar vortex that we're dealing with. It's not a joke. It's a polar vortex. Yes, right. it is a joke. No, no. It's, oh, this, yes, it's a they, joke. They, they called it a polar vortex. I saw it in the Inquisitor. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's because Al Gore flew somewhere. That's because, Al, Al, Gore, uh, that's because Al Gore created the Internet. Yes. Okay. okay. And the answer was the call What happened to global problem. warming? Now all we have is polar vortexes. What can you do? Oh okay, let's go back. Okay. <laughs> when, now that, look at last look. We've answered, like I said, from a from our point of view. Let's see if it changes at all once the Torah's the sources start coming in. So when Hashem created Hashem, uh, when Hashem created man, He charged him with taking care of the world. He says, and God took man and placed him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to guard it. Positive and negative commandments here. So the Midrash Kohelet says, when God created Adam, he showed him all the trees of the Garden of Eden and said to him, see my works, how beautiful and praiseworthy they are. And everything that I created, I created for you. Make sure that you don't ruin and destroy my world. Wait. No, 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 stop. Now, based upon that, let's look at case two when she is particular about recycling. If I leave the food, if I leave the uh, non-recyclable, the recyclables in the regular trash bin, it's clear that it's just going to go into a landfill. And God knows how long it takes my little styrofoam cup to, the TV, okay, for it to dissolve. Probably never, I don't know. Never, right? These they... never go away, okay? I don't use paper cups anymore. Is it a matter of months? A matter of months if, if it's exposed to ultraviolet, yeah. They break down very quickly. Okay, I'll leave Why it outside. Why don't they take styrofoam and recycle? Because actually recycling styrofoam costs the recyclers more money than they want to spend for the return yeah. because when you heat this stuff, it shrinks down to nothing because yeah. it's mostly okay. air. Okay. Why don't we use paper cups anymore? Remember when the heavy heavyweight paper okay. coffee cups? And you wouldn't have this problem. No, that's because, different. Because different, of the wax. Different, 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 different. Then there's the other theory that as long as it stays in the gravity well, we eventually it's going to get... conversation. <laughs> eventually that it's going to get No, let's go back to it. So if it's... Let's say I have a plastic bottle. Leave me alone. Okay. I have a plastic bottle. If I have a plastic bottle, that's not going to dissolve either so quickly. You know, things take time. So according to this, it would seem that Lisa should uh, force herself to bring it on the, even though it's the most difficult part of the hike, suck it up and go with it. You have to keep the planet. You can't destroy the world. So it seems that Lisa, now, what one person suggested when I had a, it began as a lunch and learn here, was that everybody should take it, even though they don't hold by it. I said, oh, so what can the communism or socialism? Everybody, you're going to partition everybody. But that was another idea that was brought out. So maybe everybody could uh, do it. 
uh, could take a little bit. Take a little. And that would fit into this midrash. This absolutely would fit into the midrash because we all have the obligation to not destroy this world. He gave it to us. So we have to take care of it. Yeah, we have to save really, the whales. We have to do all these we things. We really shouldn't then use anything that's not totally recyclable. We pack, shouldn't use things that pack it in. Really Correct. Not. That way Correct. you could leave it on the roadside and then in two or three months it would be gone. Okay, no problem with that. But the, po- the point is that this, at this juncture, it would seem that case number two with uh, Lisa, that they should take it away. Case number one, Yogurt, there's no waste. Leave it on the, for the animals. They'll eat it up. No problem. When it comes to waste and electricity, again, uh, am I using, is it a waste? Is it not a waste? Let's assume it was a waste, by the way. What do you do then? Turn off the air conditioner and live without You it. turn it off. Um, maybe you may have to turn it off altogether, but, or what can you do? But that would, again, if I'm looking at the concept of don't destroy my planet, I gave it to you as a gift don't destroy it, then what I have to do is learn how to safeguard my planet. Well, it's not my planet, but God's planet. Mm-hmm. Safeguard the property. And if you look at Pierre Kevot, it says that the, I should treat other people's property as my own. So if I'm, if what I want, my life's burning all week long? It's a question I have to ask myself. And I can't verify or deny what you're saying about the electricity bill. I know from when I know on my case, if I would leave my uh, my filter going full time, I'm spending mega bucks uh, as compared to if I shut it down after eight, six hours or eight hours. Yeah, but you're trying to accomplish a totally different thing with a cool filter than with an air conditioner. I'm only argu- the only argument I'm making is with that the steady flow of electricity. And I'm saying that I'm not sure. Based upon that, I didn't. I, I'm not doing a study on it. But based upon that, I would say that and you. It seems that you are wasting, but you're saying you're not. So I, I did. I did. You I did, did a study. It. Okay. So. Okay. There you go. I'm but trusting you on that job. A, a pool filter is pulling more electricity to do a different kind of job. Ooh. It's like comparing uh, he apples he and oranges. Believe you. <laughs> so, you know, it's not the same thing. He doesn't believe you. Okay. <laughs> so now. What are we really talking about? First of all, you have two questions that he presents. Uh, I'm just presenting them, not to get stuck on them. One question is, how does the charge in the verse in the Bray sheet differ from the charge presented by the Midrash, namely that God says to guard and keep it, versus this is my country, this is my land, uh, this is, I gave you this uh, planet, don't destroy my world. Okay. And do you think that these directives were meant specifically for Adam? Well, for all future generations. Okay. My dad, he asked, why? What, what was your... Because most kids would just say, Adam, or future generations. <laughs> Take a choice, yeah, 50-50 shot, and be right. But then he, he forced us to say, why? Really, what we're talking about, the mitzvah that we're centering on, is Baal Tashkit, the prohibition against destruction. That's really what the... Pro, that's really this whole conservation is built upon that principle. In addition to our general obligation to preserve the world, there is a specific prohibition against destroying items. The, this, the prohibition is known as Baal Tashkit. It says in Devarim, in Deuteronomy, when you shall besiege a city a long time and waging war against it to capture it, you shall not destroy the trees of the city by wielding an axe against them, so that you may eat of them and you shall not cut them down. For is the tree of the field man that is to be besieged by you? Only the trees of which you know that they are not fruit trees, those you may destroy and cut down, so that you may build a fence around the city that wages war against you until it is captured. So his questions would be, why do you think there's a prohibition against cutting down fruit trees? And do you think the prohibition applies to items other than fruit trees. So there's two different questions. Basically, why does it apply to fruit trees and not another tree? Because fruit trees give you something to give sustenance. Correct. Simple. Okay? So that's why it's baltashkit. You could argue that a, another type of tree could give you wood, the paper, and so on and so that's forth. That's not as essential as No, but food. you're not wasting it either, which is why you can cut oh, them down. I see what you're saying. Okay? 
which is why you'd be able to cut them down. You could use them to build houses. Again, you're using them. If I was just going to go into the woods and start knocking trees down for no, absolutely no reason, that could fall under the category of baltashvit. If I'm going to take this cup and just start smashing it before you have used it, or whatever the case is going to be, then that could fall into the category of baltashvit. If I'm going to tear paper for absolutely no reason, or tear whatever I'm tearing, material, for absolutely no reason, I don't get any benefit from it. I'm just doing it because I like to, I guess. I just do it just for a destructive manner. That is baltashvit. Okay. If I waste food, that is baltashvit. So that's the second answer. The prohibition applies to a lot of different things. Eat Every, everything on your plate. Eat everything on your plate, or don't take it, right? And that's where you know, that's where you got that saying from eat everything on your plate because. There are people die is starving in starving Indonesia. Armenian. Armenian, there you go. Mm-hmm. Indonesia, wherever they're gonna starve. Okay. Yeah, well it's not a good reason to finish off. The, but the people okay. who like to pop bubble pack, um, that's that's an issue then too. Why? Well, you're destroying something for the sake of destroying it. Haven't you ever seen anybody sitting there popping the bubble? So that's it's therapeutic. That would be therapeutic, they could argue. By the way, if it's therapeutic Oh, and that's why you could ask the question, why are we allowed to do Kriya, right? When somebody dies, we rip our clothes. Yeah. And we, why is that? Because it's taking the grief out on something else besides your body. And besides, the, we're told to do it. But that's what the halacha, because the halacha asks that question. Isn't it baltash The answer is no, because there's some purpose to it. Hmm. There's a purpose. So it, random destruction is baltash Right. And, and purposeful discussion, destruction is not. when you take something and use it for something, a, a good purpose, that then it's out of that category. Correct. Correct. Okay, so now, let's the fall. We have two sources. The Rambam says the prohibition, this prohibition doesn't only apply to trees, rather, anyone who breaks utensils, tears garments, destroys buildings, closes wells, or wastes. Food in a destructive manner violates the prohibition. Here go the food fight. Yes, the food <laughs> fight of animal health is no good, right? <laughs> Correct. That, that's amazing. That costs for every single one of us, I think. And all the lunch and lunch I've given us. I think everybody picked on the food fight. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. It's okay. a cultural I thing. Was, I was thinking of leftovers and. You know, that, that in particular, one of the things that struck me years ago, in the Army, they cook for hundreds of people a number of meals, but, and they fill garbage cans and every mess hall with uneaten food. Right. They don't waste it, though, because they generally sell it to local pig farmers. That's their big thing. Fine. Yeah, but so oh, it just gets tossed. Correct. But this is, by the way, not only the armed forces, but today, because of our litigious society, caterers cannot give their leftover food to soup kitchens anymore. Right. So what they have to do is basically toss it. Because if they would give it to a soup kitchen and somebody, God forbid, would get sick, they are facing lawsuits. So they're not interested, after doing a mitzvah, to be sued for that. So they rather just throw it away. And uh, if they can get to a big farm, fine. But it's, uh, that's because of today's social society. It used to be that after an event, you would give some of that food away. Uh, and uh, like I said, today, because we can't, we can't. But the Rambam is dealing with, like you said, a, uh, what you're pointing out. If I just, just do it in a destructive manner, that's when I break the prohibition. So in case number one, where he has two cups of two yogurts and he only can finish one and he can't finish the other. Jonathan is full. He doesn't want to have it. Should he eat it? Should he force himself? The answer is no. Is it baltashkit? No, because you didn't do it for a destructive reason. You did it because you can't eat it. It's leftovers. So again, put it on the ground. Let the, let the animals have it. Do what you want with it. But even if you would throw it away, just like the caterers have to do and like the arm forces uh, basically do, and most colleges do. The only one that doesn't throw it away is the 
met with Sorosan to weep on the freezer for the next Shabbat. <laughs> okay. I've seen this yeah. before. <laughs> and if we, you're even warned every Shabbat by Rabbi, the, Rabbi Lindu, who says, if you don't need it now, you will see this again. <laughs> okay. and, and I'm, I'm happy to eat it at any time. Yeah, there you go. So, the kosher meal is a kosher meal. That's right. So we don't, we try not to throw anything away. We were very big on paltas. Okay. But, uh, but I see how you cleverly get at least one lawyer to eat it every Shabbat. That's right, right. That way, that we can do it. We warn everybody, we warn everybody. This was from, uh, this was from Genesis. Was from, but it's, uh, okay. So now, Sefer Achinoch, again, Sefer Achinoch, I always like to give his introduction. He wrote his book, for his child who was going away from him. And so he wanted him to review the, the mitzvot of the Parsha every week. So he wrote it by Parsha, by the sections of the Torah. And he looked at this mitzvah of Bal Tashchit, of uh, prohibition against destruction. And he said, the foundation of this mitzvah is known. And that is to teach ourselves to love that which is good and purposeful and to cling to it. And through this good, will cling to us, and we will distance ourselves from that which is bad and destructive. They, uh, these are the ways of the pious people. They love peace and are happy when seeing the good in people, and through that bring people close to Judaism. They won't, even, they won't waste even one seed of mustard, and they are bothered by any waste or destruction that they see. If they have the ability to save anything from destruction, they will try their hardest to save it. So and that's you should make an effort, but then you shouldn't uh, do, distress yourself or put yourself in a harmful situation in order to do it. Okay. So you would say to Lisa, is, I understand you about this, but you know, leave it alone. Either come back, or, uh, but don't, don't take it on the trip with you, because it could potentially hurt you. And you would convince her it's not baltashka because you didn't intentionally try to destroy it, right? Okay. So we're getting a Jewish concept there. We're building the the the, uh, the then framework. She needs to have a long talk with whoever packed the picnic lunch in her family about using recyclables. There, there is a concept when you're backpacking: pack it in, pack it out. Mm -hmm. You know, they used to teach burn or bury your garbage, and now it's if you bring it in, carry the trash bag and take it out because if nothing else, it's going to be empty. Okay. Um, I hear, I hear, but it's, if I'm if I have recyclables and I would want, she was according to what we have and the right. story that we have here, she is uh, assuming that she can, like we have a recycling bin in our kitchen, so she's also assuming that wherever they go, they're going to have recycling bin, so she can drop it in there. Her mistake, because not everybody cares about recycling. So the questions for the, again, he has questions, he has three questions. What do you think Maimonides meant, means, when he says that it is prohibit, prohibited to destroy something in a destructive manner? Can you give examples? That's number one. When Sefer Chinuch discusses uh, what pious people do, is he recommending that everyone follow this approach or giving an example to teach a lesson? That would be another question that you have to ask on the Sefer Chinuch. What was his intent when he was telling his ch child that pious people do this? Does he want his child to do that? If that's the case, why, why didn't he? Why did he not just say people act in this manner? People are concerned, but he didn't. He said pious people, tzaddikim, or chassidim, probably. I don't have. Oh, what was the Hebrew? I do have the Hebrew. Uh, he said. Where's the oh. His point was, oh, Anshay Maisa, uh, Chasidim, right? Chasidim. He says Chasidim, Matzadik. Is throwing out food that nobody wants to eat considered destructive? Is there any benefit to waiting until it is spoiled to throw it out? Is there any benefit to eating food that one really doesn't want to eat? Is it less destructive than throwing it out? You have all those questions. Uh, the one basic answer that I'm guessing he uh, that he wanted discussion to be about is: Can I make? A, am I a, 
able to make a bracha on a food on which I am totally full for and which really I don't want it. No. Why? That's a bracha in vain. Correct, because you're going to vomit it up. You're not going to be able yeah. to eat it. I mean, it comes to a point where it's what we call you're being a manavol reshuta Torah. You're being discussing with the permission of Torah, as it were. You say, I said a bracha, I said that, but you, you use too much. You're going to end up vomiting everything, so then it's a, it's a bracha in vain. So it's, uh, you, you really don't want to do that. I can't imagine that he'd be so full that he couldn't put down one more yogurt, but it's, uh, you know, yummy kids yogurt. Who couldn't finish that up? And usually yogurts are this big. So <laughs> I can't imagine you couldn't do it unless you brought a five pound tub of it. Okay. But nonetheless, is it, is it le- he's asking an inter- interesting question. Is it less destructive than throwing it out? If I'm going, I'm going to waste it one way or another, so either I can throw it in the garbage. I wouldn't throw it in the garbage because I would open it and put it on the ground and let the animals That's come. what I do. I take, that, that's what I I would take do. stuff that I don't, can't use. I mean, it can't be reused, but there's too much of it. Right. And, of course, I have a lot of wildlife in my area, so right. I just lay it around the sun. Yeah, I can imagine that. Right. I can imagine that's what I would have done in this case, but who knows? I'm not sure. they, they want to limit it very much. So now we get to recycling. Recycling gives us the ability to take an item that we would have otherwise discarded and use it for something productive. So if such an item, such as a plastic bottle, is not usable in its current state and can only be usable again after being destroyed and recycled, does throwing the item into ordinary trash rather than recycling constitute destroying it in a destructive manner? If you have no recycling bins and all you have is trash, I think it's better to put it in the trash than leave something that's not edible just laying around. I mean, literally, literally, right, yeah. okay. So the Gemara presents a similar situation, a similar situation similar to recycling. But Yosef said, here is where Rebbe taught that one should not spill out water drawn from a well is if others can use it, okay? So the Gemara does not reference the prohibition of Baltashchit in presenting the issue of spilling the water, well water. The implication is that this issue is one of general or proper behavior. Should wasting the water be a violation of Baltashchit? Why or why not? Because what it was saying is you shouldn't pour it out because other people uh, can use it, not because it's Baltashchit. So he's asking an interesting question again. Should Why shouldn't this be Baltashchit? Why should it? Why shouldn't it? On both sides. But Velaza Fleckless, Fleckless, right, raised the following question, but doesn't provide a def- definitive answer. He said, suppose someone could prevent something from destruction, but it would take a lot of time or it would be burdensome. Should we assume that allowing the item to be destroyed is considered productive because of the benefit that the person receives from not having to waste time or energy or perhaps we should not factor in a person's time and energy because by saving the item from destruction, one is engaged in a mitzvah and therefore not wasting him or her's time and energy. So that would be, so yes, what do you think about this question? This is what we call time... uh, uh, Time utilization. No. uh, Time management. Cost-benefit analysis. Cost-benefit analysis. Well, is it worth my time to do this or not? What's going to be more effective? I, I don't want, I have to destroy it. So now, if, if I take all this time out, I could have been doing something else at, the, at that time. Or do I say, oh, the mitzvah, part of the mitzvah. That I'm, I'm involved in one mitzvah, I'm exempt from another mitzvah. So, Reflectless's question seems to be the sub- subject of debate. Presented in the Mishnah Barora, according to Jewish law, uh, regarding someone who has a pellet that is worn, worn out, but the tzitzit are still usable. So he says, when the tzitzit strings are complete and can be placed on another garment, there are later, later authorities who wrote that one should untie and unravel the strings rather than cutting them off in order that they won't be destroyed. Our rabbis have thought that one should not spill the water of a well if others can use it. That's the reason you would untie them and then put him on the next garment. The author of the Chai Adam, and this is how I, be, I believe the Mishnah Bar is ruling, the author of the Chai Adam wrote 
that it is difficult, if it is difficult or burdensome to untie them. It is permissible to cut them, and one does not violate the prohibition against destroying items because one is not doing so for a destructive purpose. So again, what is my purpose for cutting it? If it's, if it's because I don't want to waste my time, I have better things to do, so I'm fine. So they're going to Chayadam, that's when you do that. On the other hand, the other people disagree with him and say, no, it's usable. Since we have this principle of you can't spill the water up because other people can't drink from it, so these seat in this situation can be used again. So therefore, I have to unravel, even though it's going to take my time, and do it. So it's an argument. Again, I believe the Mishnah Brora is the last quoted thing. I haven't, I didn't look inside, but I'm guessing he would vote, go more with the Chayadim with that. Okay. Now, finally, wasting electricity. Before there was an awareness about conservation of electricity, Rav Chaim, Rav Yosef Chaim of Baghdad discussed wasting oil from a lantern. Regarding those who normally leave two wicks each weeknight, each weekday night, in order to increase the light in the house, and they leave the candle lit at night while they are sleeping until the morning because they need the light should they wake up in the middle of the night, I ruled that they must remove one of the wicks while they are sleeping, because while they are sleeping, they don't need a lot of light. And if they leave both if they leave both wicks in, they waste fuel and violate the prohibition of you shall not destroy. Hmm. Okay, so now uh, does Rev Yosef Chaim's comment support Shira or Kayla's argument? Who does he support? He would support uh, Shira. Shira says leave it on. No, no. I thought Shira said... Shira says, leave it on. Oh, well, then she supports Kayla. Nope. Yeah. Not really. He's saying that you don't need a lot of it while you're sleeping, so he's arguing for reducing and increasing as you uh, need. Right. So what what would he suggest to them? Not to turn it off totally. Turn it down. Turn it down. Yeah. Turn so it down. Or in the case of an air conditioner, turn it up. Yeah. Like, put it at 70. Yeah. Okay, whatever that. Whatever. But, but, yeah. and so, so it's not. So it's not constantly going on, right? So what he would say to you is, Handalea, very nice. You're saving electricity, but still the amount you're using, because you're not in the house for eight hours, so you turn it up to seventy or whatever, seventy-three, seventy-four, seventy-five. That's what I do. But you turn it up. I I adjust it when I'm not going to be home. I don't have. Oh, so you, so you weren't saying. But I never turn it on and off. And no, no, it's off. fine. But he, so he's not saying do that. Yeah. What he's saying is, look, you need it on. We understand you need you need it on, but you still conserve by turning it up or turning it or turning it down, depending on what we're doing. Okay. So, Same thing with a furnace. Correct. In the when you're not going to be there, so you I put it down. You leave it going, it. of course. Yeah. But you don't turn it. You don't you don't leave it at seventy two. So when you walk in, you can show, ah, Machaya. You don't do that, okay? So that's what he's that's what he's arguing, okay? Again, you have the argument, cost benefit analysis. If I could find out that it's true what you're saying, with that, by leaving it on steady, 72 or 70, whatever, whatever semi temperature at, and that comes out, let you some less electricity, it's fine. So I should do that too. If it's the, if it's uh, six and a half one one six half or six half the, whatever the expression is one half a half a dozen six to the other so then it's it could it can go both ways then I'm being I'm 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 saying okay look I want it on like I said want it on but I just want to turn it up or down again I just adjust a little because of this concept of I'm not there all the time why should I have it that cool I don't want it so I'm the little infinitesimal amount I want to save if I save anything. That is good. I save electricity. That would be his opinion. According to the other one, according to the Chai Adam versus uh, the, the other rabbis, and it's burdensome for me to remember to turn it up and turn it down. It's a burden. I have to remember, did I, didn't I do it? It could be that I don't have to do it anymore. Certainly if I have to turn it on, turn it off. I'm not, Imagine today we, we don't have any concept of this burden. It's a matter of, okay like that. But nonetheless, those are the questions that we have to ask ourselves. One is an issue of Baal Tashchit. 
is an issue of destroying something to destroy it. No purpose to it. If there's no purpose, I'm breaking the law by doing that. Then, on top of that, the other concept is, if I, let's say I'm not destroying it for no reason. I'm, I'm just throwing it away. But other people could use it. I still can't do that. So at the well, what do you have? A container you just leave the water in for the next person who can I guess so. I guess well, you have to sign that. I would guess at wells like that, uh, if there was a communal bucket or a trough or something. Right. Yeah, because yeah, normally you're, that's what you have at a well. Right. So the point is, you're not going to close it up. You're not going to like that. You're going to leave it for the next person to come. So that is your classic hand-me-down uh, clothes, yeah. shoes, and as the song goes, don't give me no hand-me-down. Uh, oh, forget that. More like okay. a pay-it-forward concept. No, do, do, do a favor for the next day. Yeah, but it's also you hand me down. It's the same concept. I have something that I use. We do it to our kids constantly. My kid, my youngest is wearing my oldest used to wear. I'm the oldest never gets a hand me down. The oldest gets the new stuff, but the younger ones get it. I hope Shlomo's not wearing too many hand me downs. Baruch Hashem. <laughs> he got he got the uh, the new stuff right. He had, so only both my kids got it. two of my kids got new and stuff. Yeah, the youngest one forget it. Yeah. <laughs> she gets all the old stuff. She doesn't care. Doesn't She's know. Still too young. Doesn't know. But it's uh but that's the point of hey, that. If somebody else can use it. By the way, this also goes to Gamach. You know what the Gamach is, right? Mm-hmm. So the the Gamach who they give out these these uh how do you say the name of Gamach? It's not a good will. A loan association. A loan association, good. Thank you. Where you give out the clothes, you give out the baby carriage, everything is a gamach today. Why? Because people don't have the wherewithal to buy. If everybody bought Greco stuff, Greco would be richer than they are now. So they, we all pass down Greco's and we all do what we do because we want to help other people out. That's just common courtesy because we don't need any more. So we let the other people, again, something that can be used by other people, according to this, it doesn't torture us to do it. We let it go. If I have to run the gemach, maybe it's torture. <laughs> but if I don't have to run the gemach, it's very simple to give the gemach. Uh, to the gemach. So there, is there one here in my There used to be. No, uh, as far there, as I know, there is not. There's no specialized gemach. Oh, okay. I, people, I don't know. people maintain collections of things. There's wedding decorations and wedding items okay. at one point. Um, my daughter somehow wound up in charge of the Purim gemach. Correct. Correct. I heard that. Right, I even went to that one, but it's, uh, but you have those. You have they used to have a bigger gemach, but I don't. I the problem is people don't have the time to sit there or the space to to have everything lined up and set out nicely. But uh, in the big cities, certainly in New York and uh, Boston, yeah. Muncie, Lakewood, they'll have them. So not that not that Muncie and Lakewood are big cities. But they'll still have which, which is what I find interesting about, about, Bangor. about the uh, <laughs> the local Christian gemach, so to speak. Um, Neither goodwill, not goodwill. Specifically, Salvation Army and St. Vincent de Paul function like that to some extent because they sell things, but they also give things to people who are in dire need. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Nice so they Good. they the sales fund the program to some extent. Uh-huh. Okay. But if you walk in, your house just burned down. They'll do their best to okay. research you. So like I said, that's so now when it comes to conservation, when it comes to all these issues, and you can look at these questions and now think, should I throw the food out? Should I keep it? And the answer is, you're not do it, destroying it. One of the ways you look at it, I'm not destroying it because I want to destroy it. There's a practical purpose here that I either I give it out, like I said, the animals. Or or whatever's going to happen, I didn't do it. On, I didn't have a mind. So you could argue, Stephen, don't take more than you know you're going to eat. That would be the argument that is good. Parents are going to say, you sure you can eat all that stuff, and so on and so forth. But that's that's a matter of gauging. When it comes to Lisa, again, there's two sides to that story. She can, either she has to uh, take care of it, she has to decide is is this destruction wanton destruction. Is it going to be able to be used by somebody else, as is, or whatever the case is going to be? And then what she should do? And finally, with Shirin, Shirin Kayla, again, what is the cost-benefit analysis of leaving it on? Can you turn it off? Can't, can you turn it down? What happens if I turn it down? What will be the result? 
So we'll add, can we make everybody happy? If not, maybe it's time for Shira and Kayla to break up. <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, we'll stop here. <laughs>